What is up, Scrub Fam? I am back with probably one of the most important deck profiles going into the new set two format because there's draft leaders. Before I get into it, special shout out to Bearded Collectibles, amazing sponsor, Alec Pastrana, amazing shop owner. They opened a brand new shop, much larger space if you're down in the Orlando area or the Florida area and want a place to play, that's the place to go. Amazing shop, amazing owner. Alec, of course, has the best prices on all sealed products, so if you're still looking to get your draft boxes, be sure to check out Bearded, and also be on the lookout for the 3XG Scrub Fam version 1.0 shirts coming soon. I know everyone's really hype about them. I'm hype about them, too. Also, shout out to you guys. You guys are incredible. Just the amount of subscriptions I continue to get, just the people coming to me and telling me how much they love my content and everything I'm putting out, and trust me, I'm hearing all the all the feedback you guys are saying, such as like more gameplay videos or the decks that I'm building, things like that. The only thing is just like me finding time to be able to record my Octagon games because I don't play on Octagon too much. I do a lot of my testing like in person, so I want to make sure I get that content to you guys. So I'm gonna really work hard to make sure I get this stuff on Octagon because. It's really important that you guys have access to it so you guys can learn even more and how I get the decisions I get to with the decks that I build, which a lot of the stuff, you know, it comes to like a, a feel for it. So having a feel for what I want to do with the deck, I also usually just come up with a general idea and then that's what ends up coming into what these decks become and I just start off with a theory and go from there. So let me just start with this deck itself and what the theory behind this deck is. So if you look at set one to set two format, the game has changed dramatically because set one format it was about being conservative it was about taking your time not attacking as much not being as active whereas now you want to do really powerful things a lot faster and so the bionic freeze leader everyone thinks that it's like harsh control like play a ton of extra cards play a control deck but it's it's almost like control combo and so that's what this deck kind of does it's, it's really just like a control combo deck and it relies off of the 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 promo frieza in order to help you hit that combo and that's one thing that you guys are going to find out a lot about me if i'm making moves on cards there's a reason why there's it's because either the price is down in the market when it shouldn't be and i'm going to take the opportunity to build the deck around that card and then make some special things happen uh, or in general if i just need stuff and i find out that it's lower priced than normal a lot of times you'll see me sell stuff uh, when the price is high and then rebuy when the price is low and the metagame is prepared like not prepared for it so when you guys saw me moving in on occupation of evil frieza that's why because now we're in a really sweet spot and we have the perfect leader to go along with this deck in order to allow you to combo. So now let me go into the actual deck itself. So going over the list, tricolor, everyone really wanted to try, like basically take the tricolor Ginyu shell and just put Bionic Frieza in it. But in my experience, when I first started testing, which of course that's the first thing I did, I was like, okay, let me just take this, put this in the shell. There's a lot of things that go wrong. You don't have as many triggers to activate on your turn, your permanent power on your front side. And then on your back side, you really, like, yeah, it's cool because you can use Frieza to kind of allow you to bridge before you get all your energy down, whereas, like, Ginyu didn't have that choice. Like, Ginyu basically had to, like, I need to rip a yellow, or I need to rip a green this turn. Frieza allows you to bridge that gap with your energy. So if you wanted to play that style deck, you could, but I don't think that's truly maximizing off of what the leader is capable of. And so... I figured that playing three colors, it felt really clunky, it didn't feel good, and there was way too many extra cards that I wanted to play to make the deck truly maximize off of the front and backside powers. And so I knew that taking the deck in either just two colors, so either green yellow or blue yellow, would get me to where I want to be. But the thing is, blue's cards are just so good. Sinsu Bean with Frieza is amazing. Whis Coercion, amazing. Objection, amazing. So why not do blue yellow? A lot of people are talking about just like playing blue like just splashing blue and just playing the extra cards without having any blue energy. And I just thought to myself that that could just put you in some really difficult spots. So I decided to make a mostly yellow deck with a splash of blue. So if I go through my extra cards, I run four objection because doing objection on turn one, turn two, and it giving you a card to basically put as the energy is really important. And that's any leader that has the ability to take their life into their hand and draw an extra card that turn makes objection much better. Freezer just has the ability of being able to do objection on turn one, which in this deck, if you get that, 
you're going to be able to accelerate the game extremely fast and you're going to get to a point where it's going to be really hard for your opponent to catch up because you go, being on the play and playing two energy on turn one is really powerful because now going into your second turn you're on a third and your opponent's still way behind on energy so on the play this deck is amazing on the draw objections help you catch up which is always really important and allow you to take over that and that's one thing as we go forward in this format is finding decks that are going to be really good on the draw bionic frieza is one of the first leaders that can be really great on the play but also st still maintain a lot of advantage on the draw four cold bloodlust it's the best counter spell in the game you got to play it uh two crusher ball Honestly, when I make the side deck for this, I'll probably run more of these in the side, but I'm really running the two Crusher Balls to supplement the fact that I'm only running three Reese Coercions. It just basically acts as another gate, and then combos, of course, with Mecha Freeze of the Returning Terror. Four Sensu Bean. I play this four over... Instead of playing four Reese Coercion, I play four Bean, because Bean is way more important to Freeze's success, especially in the early parts of the game, because it can allow you to tap out on your turn and still be able to defend yourself, and still be able to swing Sensu Bean ready to energy, and then you're good to go. So Sensu Bean is extremely important in a Bionic Freeze deck, because of the flexibility that it gives you on your turns. And of course, if you need it to help you awaken on your turn, you can, and if you need to play it for free, you can. Three Reese Coercions. Again, amazing. You can either play it for free with Frieza's ability or, of course, just straight up if you need to. And it's just a great negate that goes with the Frieza leader. Because even if you just need to like negate an attack, ready a low for a cold blood blush, you're good to go. Two Frieza's Call. This card, I loved this card in set one. I've always liked this card because of what it can do for a lot of decks. And now... It's basically, like, everyone's really into the Monica thing, and I'm telling you, that is a trap. That is a hardcore trap, because that card, I understand what it does. I understand it's a pot of greed, whatever Yu-Gi-Oh! players want to call it. I understand. That's cool and all, but Freeze's Call is a much more relevant effect for what, let's say, this deck is trying to do. Plus, it's going to give you pseudo the same thing without actually having to attack, or making you feel like you're wasting it by not attacking. So, one... You can play this for free, so you'll draw a card from your life, you'll then tutor an Avenging Frieza, look at the top three, and then draw a card. So you're getting a card from your life, you're drawing a card, and you're putting a body into play. Much more value, and it synergizes with the combo that we're going to be doing later in the game because it puts a body into play. And one bad ring laser, this is just to help me push through to, for lethal, or if I need something to resolve against another Cold Bloodlust deck, it's just in the deck. It's great, and I like that you can tap out and still play it for free, because you can just play it with Freeze's ability, and then you have plenty of yellow cards in this deck to help support it. So now we'll go into Avenging Frieza engine. I run four Avenging Freezes, with Freeze's Call being the fifth and sixth copy. This is one of, if not the most important card in the deck. Getting these down early helps you significantly throughout the course of the game. Four Dodoria, your 10k boost. Easy enough. Four Ginyu Force Goldo. You play it. <laughs> it's a target for Avenging Frieza, a blocker to help stifle your opponent if you need to, but also the ability to basically tap down one of your opponent's things and then swing at it with your leader is always really helpful. Two Sorbet, because I needed, again, the extra targets that cost two or less. You could also do something like Sui, or if you want to do something even like Kui. That's another thought. I might actually end up doing that myself, switching Sorbet to Kui, but I just like that this costs one. But And luckily enough, I have two yellow energy often, so this could end up becoming Kui. So this is kind of like your flex slot if you wanted to put something different here, but I just did the two Sorbets just because I like the blocker. So, But anyway, look, I'm even changing the deck right now. That can end up becoming a Kui. We'll be good to go. Uh, two Destructive Occupation Frieza. This card's great. It synergizes with our combo pieces in the early, mid, and late parts of the game. It just gives you a body on the table for free, which is really helpful to us. It allows us to untap and then have something to swing at our opponent on their turn. We have four Mecha Freezes as a Returning Terror. Great with Crusher Ball. Great removal spell. You can play it early in this deck. And again, it's just... It's strong. It's a great threat. Dual attack, double strike. You could mix this up if you wanted to do three of these in one of the promos or two of these and two in the promos, but you really just need removal in the deck. This deck, like I said, it's more so control combo, so you don't need to go all in on removal because you're going to be trying to end the game relatively quickly once you get to turns four, five, six, seven, and beyond. So your opponent's not going to be able to play that many threats against you, especially because of how fast you're going to be accelerating your energy. You're going to have them on the back foot quite often. And then now we'll go to the fun part. Three Occupation of Evil Freezes. The promo. No, oh, this card's bad. This card is $5 non-foil on TCG Player. The price is about to go up. 
because in this deck, it's amazing. Essentially, it has double strike when it comes down, activate me, and place two of your yellow, yellow battle cards other than this card in the drop area, and then choose up to one Golden Frieza, the Resurrected Terror, from your hand, and evolve over this card, and then draw two cards. That's really good. So you're going to get... So in this deck, you can play essentially... So think of it in terms of how you think of Cell. Like, oh, you can play your 7 drop on turn 3. Well, this deck can do that too. <laughs> like, And the fact that you can do that is absolutely disgusting. So again, you're playing a huge threat early, as early as possible. And the thing is, is like on your turn 3, you have 4 energy. Your opponent's turn 3, they're going to be playing their 3rd energy for the turn. Especially if you're on the play. On the draw, it's different. They'll be playing their fourth energy going into their turn four. But if you're on the play and you get this combo to go off, your opponent's not going to have enough energy. And then basically your seven drop freeze will end up living for the rest of the, uh, for the duration of the game. And then you'll essentially be able to close the game out relatively fast on your opponent. Unless they start leaving energy up to defend themselves. But by that point, you're already winning. By that point, your opponent now has to play complete defense. They can't play threats. And if they do play a threat, you got Bloodlust backup. you got Crusher Ball backup. You have Coercions. You're going to be able to protect yourself. So all we're trying to do is we're going to stall the game if we need to. But game plan is just early objection. Start getting our draw engine going with Frieza's Call and Avenging Frieza. Get some bodies down on the table, which is relatively easy. And then again, we're just going to Occupation of Evil Frieza. And then we're going to evolve straight into the 7-drop that turn. This deck can do it rather consistently because of the amount of copies that we play of each card in the deck. And it's truly the focal point of the deck. You want to get it out there. You want to accelerate to it. And then you want to end the game relatively fast, which is really easy to do, like I said before. Because your opponent's going to be low on resources. So again, this is more of a control combo version of the deck. I'm definitely certain you could go into a more control route, but that would require you to play more removal. It might require you to play more spells, and I really like to limit myself on that. So basically, I took the leader that's supposed to be really controly, I added the combo element, and then now here we go. So I'm going to I'm gonna do my best to make sure I get some games on Octagon with this deck, hopefully this week, throughout the weekend, and then I can get this posted. I also have an update to my Majin Vegeta list. So I'll be including you guys in on that as well. And so you will know what changes I'm making, which the changes I'm making is I'm going a little bit deeper into blue, but not that far. Uh, and I'm adding a little bit more crit threats to the decks as, you know, I've done some playtesting, gotten some feedback, things like that. Otherwise, though, I hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile. I hope you learned a lot. I hope that you test this out. You can hear my dog scratching himself right now. It's pretty adorable because his name is Anakin and he's super cute. Anyway, but I hope you just try this deck out and try this leader out and maybe... Think outside the box a little bit when you come up with these decks, and then can you go from there? If you guys need anything from me, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, personal crises, want to give me some feedback, want to show me some love, want to show me some hate, go ahead and put it in the comments. Also, please be sure to subscribe. We are on the race to a thousand. I'm already at six fifty something, almost six sixty. This is insane. I, I did like 150 subscribers last week. You guys are absolutely amazing. When I get to a thousand, I'm gonna do a scrub nation giveaway it's going to be a 3xg shirt it's going to be a box of your choice even if you want a draft box screw it if you want if you want a t-shirt draft box of your choice we'll go from there if you want some cards that are signed by me whatever i don't know you guys throw it out there give me some ideas but otherwise this has been bionic frieza this is robot freezer thank you guys so much have a good night okay bye